only pro wrestler I know that wants to do this shit in the morning. Yeti. Moron. Put it this way, I think Sammy Callahan might as well just change his name to Invader I 1. I want to know why. Like, he can dodge any question. Like, I'll tell anyone that. You can tell me but I, I'm going to ask specific questions. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. WrestlingNewsSource.com All the rest of you yahoos are out there dilly dilly your little wankers. We're actually receiving real wrestling news. This is Brett screwed Brett. I'm Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Brett screwed Brett. Hold two! Arm bar! Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t-shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C-Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So does rule. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I'm Ches McKenzie, and you're listening to the Irish Whip Podcast. Hey, what's up, TIW Mafia? This is the Yeti. I am here with JP and making her King of Trios debut. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Shazza McKenzie. How cool is this? Hello. And on moment's <laughs> notice... Um, we had we were gonna have PCO Quebecer on here just so you know she has Oh my gosh! But he was. Wait, am I'm your replacement PCO? Yes, you are. That, that is like like so like your choice was PCO and then it, like I but I'm like number two under PCO. Absolutely. That's that is amazing. That yeah. is made my day. When <laughs> when we put this together, but when we because JP and I were huge King of Trios fans. We love everything Mike Quackenbush does. Um, again, Chikaratopia, $7.99. First week is free. Um, we just love them. And the fact that you're going to be part of this now, your early years in Shimmer, NXT, Mae Young Classic, all this stuff, how excited are you for King of Trios? Um, King of Trios is like always – so wrestling for Shikara has always been my goal. Uh, when I first came over like, – the first time I came to America for wrestling – I was back in 2012 in uh, like February, March 2012, and I stayed in Philadelphia for six weeks, and I trained at the Russell Factory for six weeks um, under Mike Quackenbush, and like that. So that was always my goal before I did anything, um, like before I even went to Shimmer and stuff. I always like this was always something that I wanted to do. Um, So to finally be here six and a half years after I did that initial training at the Shikara Russell Factory is like. A complete dream come true. What are you most looking forward to over the weekend? Uh, just to see how it all plays out. Like, as like being in it is cool, and but like, just it's something. It's a it's a tournament that I've followed for years. So to actually physically be there and then be one of the teams that could make it to the end and just like there's always so many different possibilities of what's going to happen and who's going to wrestle who and what like what possible matches could happen is just like it's just so exciting because you just don't know what's going to happen do you do you have a, a favorite match from king of trios since you've been watching this and i didn't i didn't know that you trained under quack so that's something new for me um yeah no i do it's oh gosh i always forget what it's like team uppercut versus um it's versus quack uh sky aid and johnny say yes that's who i was like who was it like i heard this match i watched it like a million times and my brain's not working that is like one of my favorite matches of all time so that's not my favorite match that's happened to king of trios but that's my favorite trios match that's happened to king of trios Okay, I understand. I was like, that's why I knew that not be I, your favorite I, match from King of Trios. <laughs> you said uppercut in Quack versus Quack. I knew right where you would go. Yeah. We did, I actually drove down from Boston to see that match with a bunch of friends. Well, you know, that's fair. I, 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 if I was in any sort of same continent, I probably would have driven to see it. <laughs> now, how often are you in America now? Um, as often as I'm allowed to be here, <laughs> as often as, as people let me come here or people bring me over to be here, I, I would happily, my, my goal in life would be to be able to move here and live here so that I can wrestle as a full-time job because it's just not a viable 
possible thing to do on the other side of the world. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, this is the third time I've been here this year. Um, and then I'll be back again in October for Shimmer. Um, so yeah, it, it used to be two times a year and this year it's, it's a few more times. <laughs> How often are you able to wrestle in Australia? Oh, I wrestle pretty much every weekend. Um, okay. Like, like we would we would wrestle pretty much, yeah, every weekend, and sometimes double headers and stuff like. That. There is a lot of wrestling there. Like, it's definitely um, picking up, and there's there is a lot of work, and we've been working very hard as a community to build up our reputation and build up our crowds and build up the work so that we can wrestle but it's just uh economically speaking the cost of living in australia is significantly higher than the cost of living in america um and therefore the, it would be pretty much impossible to ever wrestle for a living in australia unless we're making young bucks money which only the young bucks make the young buck money <laughs> For people that understand King of Trios, you could sit here and I probably say this too much. I can run down the names that have been in the King of Trios. And you just, you hit on one of my favorite matches. Um, I believe it was from 2012 with the Young Bucks. They also had, JP, help me out here. Maria Canellos and Mark Bennett, right? Mike. Mike Bennett. Okay. Man, I always mess up his name. I'm horrible at it. And he's such a nice guy, a good, talented <laughs> wrestler and a great father so far. Sorry, Mike. 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 So far. He's gonna, he's gonna ruin his life soon enough, but so yeah. far he's all right. Yeah, yeah. Wait till she's seventeen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the young bucks have been in the King of Trios. Yes, multiple so, times. When Matt Jackson jumped up on the rope, lost his balance, and racked himself even before the match started, that was the coolest part of Chikara for me. <laughs> that just shows that, he's, that just that's shows that he's human. That's what shows that he's human. <laughs> Nothing else. Who's ins- who inspired you to become a like in Australia? I mean, Australian wrestling to me is the sheep herders. Who is it? In, in, <laughs> growing up, who inspired you to become a pro wrestler? Well, like it wasn't a, like my whole story of how I started watching wrestling is basically I didn't start till I was sixteen, so I was reasonably late to the game um, when it comes to watching the wrestling. Um, and the reason I started, what, what drew me in was uh, I, was I had a boyfriend at the time and he really wanted to watch the wrestling. And I was like, oh, no, that's like, that sounds gross. And, you know, all the typical things that a girl would um, probably say. And then I remember seeing Trish Stratus come out and it was just after she, she just turned heel um, and she was teaming with, uh, like, she was with Christian and she was just so badass and tough but also, like, still feminine at the same time. And I was just like, oh, okay, maybe this isn't just all, like, oiled up guys in Speedos because that's what, the impression that you get if you're completely outside of never watched wrestling. And then from there I just don't head first in because I always say that like with wrestling you either you get it and it's just com- consumes your whole entire life or you'll just never understand it but yeah with me as soon as I saw Trish and I was just like I will keep watching this and then the next minute I just didn't leave my house and just watched wrestling all day every day really. this is <laughs> so I'm curious because uh, you, you were born in 1988 correct Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. So for you, we're we're going to discuss how old I am. No. <laughs> for, for, for you to get for you to get access to stuff over here in the U.S., you probably had to order like DVDs. Yep. Or did you guys did you guys get into DVDs, tape trading stuff like that when oh, you guys I, were younger? Yeah, I have. I have so much. Yeah, uh, like so many like random indie D- DVDs that like I have like there's a box under my bed um, of just. DVDs because I don't have room for them anywhere in my house anymore and everything's just online now so I don't actually watch my DVDs anymore but I have yeah I have yeah I used to buy them all on like eBay and stuff like I remember bidding on like people would sell like this is my collection of like a hundred random indie DVDs so it's kind of like a wrestle crate but on eBay and someone's DVDs and you just be like cool I wonder what I'm gonna get and then you just 
get a bunch of random DVDs and just watch them. It was great. I'm gonna. So I read somewhere that Trish Stratus was your favorite female wrestler. Yeah, well, she was, she's the reason I started watching wrestling. Who who would you say is your favorite male wrestler? Uh, well, I'd probably say it was Mike Quackenbush. <laughs> That's a good dick right there. JP <laughs> was trying. JP was trying to set something up. I think. I don't know. It's Brock Lesnar. That's what it says on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Oh. Interview over. Sorry, <laughs> I ruined everything. I'm sorry, I, but it's my quack and bush. But my Wikipedia page says it's Brock Lesnar. I love Brock. Uh, I love Brock so much that he had to be such a jerk to get Roman over. But that's that other crap. We don't want to talk about it. Um, Brock, the being an attraction. <laughs> what else? I mean, you you've got King of Trios this weekend. Um, yes. You don't know. I mean, what time is it right now in Australia? It's tomorrow. At... I'm not in Australia. I'm in America. I know, but right now, <laughs> yeah. right like... right now, it's you got to have some jet lag, right? That's the point I was getting to. Oh, okay. I was like, I have to be in the country already. It's not going to work otherwise. Um, it's probably sometime in the morning. Probably maybe like 10 a.m. or so. Maybe. So you're, maybe. You're, you're seriously jet. I mean, when did you get in the states? Last night. So you're seriously jet lagged? Yes, yes. Wow. I, there was a brief period of time where I was like, mm, maybe I'm just going to fall asleep instead of do this podcast. <laughs> we don't want to. You, you can fall asleep and do the podcast at the same time. You can. We, we we do it all the time. So, <laughs> I Go do ahead. want to on something serious with you. Yeah. Back in June, you you came out with your your Me Too statement, and I don't want to go over the statement because that's out there, and I'm sure everybody's talked about that. What I'd want to ask you about is if there was any repercussions or aftershock after the like, fact. yeah. Look, there was de- there was definitely people that, uh, I guess didn't believe me or didn't want to believe me or did believe me and didn't care. Uh, but the amount of support uh, and the amount of people that uh, saw my story and used it as a wake-up call for themselves or to and realize what they'd been doing has been wrong or uh, just people that were supportive, that far outweighed any negative um, responses that I did get and I, I'd say for the majority of it the negative responses that I got were people just trying to I guess stir the pot and like get get a rile up for their own good um, and it, it's definitely I think been more positive and I think that sharing my, my story has helped a lot of people and I think that that was the other thing that I wasn't expecting as much from uh, when when I put out my story, that wasn't what I was expecting. Was the amount of people that uh, confided in me with their own stories and thanked me for sharing my story, um, and that really made it all completely worth it. Knowing that I'd helped other people um, in takes, that situation. It takes that, especially in pro wrestling, which is essentially a boys' club. Yes. To come out on something like that. Um, but the fact that you get the positive support really does show that it is a boys' club in the way that it's not all about the boys. It's about the brotherhood, the sisterhood, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely think times are, are changing and stuff like that will never like, – it won't, it won't be tolerated ever again. I don't it, think I think it's moving it, in a far more it, positive direction. It should not be. And that's – now, I just wanted to, like I said, I wanted to touch on that just because I think it's important to put it out there that you can't come forward and, you know, not that, yeah, is everyone going to believe you? Probably not, but most people will, and people will stand behind you and support you in. Exactly. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to come yeah, forward. Yeah, don't be afraid. That's that's so, the coolest thing is, is uh, it takes a lot of courage to be able to do that, especially in the boys, I mean, it's a is a male dominant. It's always been dominated that way, and you could get blackballed very, very easily. So it's oh, yeah. we applaud you. It's a it's a huge thing, um, and it reflects where professional wrestling is. Uh, I mean, you've got people like Jamie Senegal, 
uh, Pero, um, other individuals that you're going to be wrestling this weekend that are they're openly gay now. It's acceptable. Mm. It's 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 so much the progress not only in the world, um, but also in pro wrestling is totally opposite than what it was even five years ago. Yeah, that's completely just my different. opinion. No, a hundred percent. In the time that I've been a professional wrestler, the dynamic in the locker rooms have changed drastically. How much for more? The better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's JP. We, we've been doing this for about uh, twenty-five minutes. I don't want to keep Shaz up too much more. Let's take a quick break. Um, let's come back. Uh, let's really hit on the King of Trios um, with Madison and Jessica. Um, yes. See uh, how the Shimmer Collective is going to yeah, stack up. I mean, we may get her against the Tokyo Yoshi Freedom Fighters. I mean, that'd be pretty dang cool. Um, maybe even against the Sisters of the Mighty with Solo and boy, Molly Holly. Man. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll wrestle Molly Holly any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll it's completely take a, okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a quick break. Um, we'll come back. We'll really hit on the King of Trios. Um, a couple more questions, and then uh, we're going to get you some sleep. that cool? Yay, that sounds good. Greetings, wrestling fans. This is Dave Dynasty, host of the Dave Dynasty Show, the podcast that every week brings you nearly two hours of pro wrestling goodness from the Midwest. We feature interviews with the legends of the past, stars of today, and the prospects of tomorrow. We have segments that feature classic wrestling audio, whole episodes devoted to the history of Midwest pro wrestling, and much, much more. Do not miss an episode of the Dave Dynasty Show. We are available on all podcast platforms, or you can access past episodes and all of our social media links by visiting DaveDynasty.com. Be good, be safe, and keep on growing. Hey, Smarks, your boys J-Bomb and Desmino here to tell you that if you're enjoying this awesome podcast, then you'll love ours over at Talkmania. Weekly episodic podcastic adventures, as well as additional content such as our 10-count episodes, prediction shows, contests, and more. What is Talkmania exactly? Well, just a couple dudes from Canada who grew up on pro wrestling through the 80s, 90s, the Attitude Era, WCW, to the now, man. We live tweet, we periscope, we drink beer. We're Canadian, eh? You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, or wherever you get your podcast kicks from. And give us a listen and a subscription. You can also find us on Twitter, at underscore Talkamania. Be part of the Talkamania family. Be a Talkamaniac, brother. All right, guys, we are back. We still have Shaza McKenzie, who is somehow still standing after a flight yesterday from the other side of the world. Um... And here with Josh, unfortunately, too, wearing his Pittsburgh Steelers jersey. But... Shut your pie hole. <laughs> now, Shaza. Yes. You put out a tweet not too long ago about Rhonda. Can we talk about <laughs> Yes. Can I, do you want, can I read of it? Of course. Can I just read it so I... everybody knows exactly what it says? Oh, my gosh. But I sound so, I sound so sassy. No. Oh, okay. Who gives a shit? <laughs> okay. Quotation, air quotes, right? Food for thought. Yeah. People who are upset about the fact that Ronda is champion need to realize how vital she was in the women's evolution. Because of Ronda, women in all sports are getting opportunities they didn't before. She is the revolution. I await the internet hate now. And I got lots of it. (laughs) And you got lots of it. (laughs) And I, JP and I are of the thought that we are exactly on board with you. Um, Ronda is everything... She's, she's lived a tough life. She's a great human being, and she gives inspiration to every, as far as I know that I've talked to, every young woman um, that I've ever talked to. They just, it, she's been the one that's done that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just definitely think um, if you look back at specifically at the women's revolution within WWE, um, and people will always it, it will always come back to the four horse women with Charlotte and Becky and Sasha and Bailey. But the end of the day is they wouldn't have gotten the opportunities they they got, no matter how hard they worked, unfortunately, if Rhonda hadn't been able to prove in MMA that women can be a main event draw and draw more money than the guys. Like if they if she hadn't done any of that, then the eyes of the big bosses up up top would never have been open to the possibility even of giving women the opportunities that they've got 
So she she is the reason that this whole revolution started and how and how the whole perception of women's wrestling and women in sport uh, started to change and be taken more seriously. So she's definitely like I think that's what I was trying to get across in that uh, tweet is that we wouldn't have had any of this. We wouldn't have had the Hell in a Cell main event. We wouldn't have had uh, Sasha Bailey Iron Woman. We wouldn't like we wouldn't have had any of that. Like if she hadn't gone and sold out arenas for UFC years before that. And that's the biggest thing, because Dana White himself, uh, on record, said there will never be a woman in the octagon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she was literally, she was the one who changed his mind. And here's exactly. the thing, and she has, I 100% agree with you, because when we, when I watched UFC, and I used to be a huge fan, it was different for me to watch two women beat the shit out of each other. It was different. It, it was, mm. I don't consider it a desensitization. I'm more considered uh, adaptation to women, just because they're women, doesn't mean they can't fight. Right. Mm. Boxing forever. Yeah, exactly. So it's, like, it's that you guys are you, and I, I'm including you in that. Of course, you guys are athletes. You guys are. Yeah, just, we just want to, everyone just wants to be seen as an equal. There's no women's wrestlers and male wrestlers, as far as I'm concerned. There's just wrestlers, and, and that's the opinion that needs to be in everyone's minds, but without women like Rhonda opening some of the more narrow minds to that idea, then we wouldn't be where we are in opening the more narrow minds that still need to be opened, if that makes sense. Uh, do you have a preference on wrestling males over females? Well, this uh, is no. right now. I, I just enjoy wrestling. Wrestling. so completely happy if if i only wrestled girls i'd be completely happy if i only wrestled guys i'd be completely happy it it really doesn't matter to me one bit you trained right i can tell like you trained the same as the guys too huh well yeah yeah there's no there's no like women's class or anything we all we're all trained together we're all we're all a team we all push each other but there's no special treatment um for the girls, because once you start start giving girls special treatment, um, or even start giving boys special treatment, once you give anyone special treatment, it just causes far more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> yeah, and there's stuff like Shimmer and stuff where the girls, you're not just an attraction on the show anymore. You know, you're not the, the popcorn match, if you will, anymore. You guys yeah, are- the, we are the match. We are the show. <laughs> That's no shit. That is no shit. <laughs> it, it, it's cool to have seen that formation happen. Like, I know you've wrestled Nikki and Shimmer and all, Nikki Rocks, between Shimmer and all that stuff. And, like, I watched Nikki come up here in the New England area, and, mm. like, watching how she did it, it was, she was different than any other girl in this, any other woman in this area, I'd say. Yeah. And watching how it happened and transformed, and she was with the boys before the show, she was with the boys after the show. You know, she was she was one of them, and it was yeah. uh, she could beat the shit out of any one of them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so be, speaking of beating the shit out of anybody, King of Trios. Yes. Yes. Let's, 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 the, let's the get this S word out of everybody. Yeah. Uh, That's right. King of Trios. Shaz, Shaz and Madison Eagles and Jessica. Troy, yes. The Shimmer Jessica Collective. Troy. Yes. yes. How excited are you to be with those three? Two, oh my I gosh. should say. All three of you with those. Well, the, yeah, all three I, together. It's honestly, like, these are my, they're two of my best friends in the entire world, and we train together weekly, um, wrestle weekly. Like, we wrestle each other weekly. Like, there's there's no two people that I would rather share this experience with. Like, this is the perfect team for me. This is the people that I know can take me to the end, uh, and Will not just take me to the end that will go to the end with me uh we will we will go as a team uh but yeah I, I couldn't be more happy with who my team is and i know that we're a strong team and because we are a team we're not we're not three girls just thrown together because we have something in common we are a team in life we work together we train together we we are together always the final match who's at the other side of the ring what's your prediction for that 
Cool. I don't know. I there is a lot of teams that I think have a chance of making it to the end uh, with us. Obviously, not against us. Uh, I think that there's a very solid chance that the colony will make it through to the end. I think uh, the new fist is like they're they've been on a war path and they're just getting stronger and getting more into their strides with Icarus leading the t- the um, the guys through. So I think I think they're two of the teams that I see going quite far. Um, I also would I definitely think it would be really cool if uh, the other Australian team, the ancient ancient order of the nations, also made it through to the end and we had an all Australian final. I think that would be the coolest. That that would be that would be something to take home. Yeah. You no, know, that's a that's something I didn't think I didn't even consider that. But that that would be the ideal goal. With us of course winning at the end, because goal power. That's it. That's it. I, I'm with like I'd love to see the colony go pretty far in that. Um, I, I've always I've, generations of the colony I've watched and I, I've always yeah. watched in just such a fun fun group and they know they're all great at what they do. It, it's such a like you said the tournament is so hard to predict. It's so hard to call. There's so many teams and so many wild cards in there. Yeah, exactly. You never know. Uh, Might be Nexus. Maybe Nexus is going to win. I don't know. Maybe Molly Holly's going to win. <laughs> Who knows? Who do you look? I mean, if you if you get the chance after the first round against another team, which one are you wanting it to be? There's two people in teams that I want to wrestle, and it's Molly Holly and PCO. Just because one Molly Holly. I want if I can wrestle her, that would be insane. And to PCO because he's insane, and I want to wrestle the insane man. So if he I could did. just wrestle him, that would be great. He, he <laughs> I, really is, man. The stuff he's like, have you seen any of his recent matches? Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's he's insane. I love it. I I think he's crazy, but so crazy good. Like I get all the hype. It's completely warranted to be putting your body on the line the way that he puts his body on the line at his age like he doesn't need to do that but he does it to entertain people and it's amazing i just finished watching uh, before we did this i was watching him live over at all in and they were doing their they were doing their thing and Mm. uh he took a picture of the undertaker stapled it on his chest and then uh, I can't. Who's his? Who's the manager? God, I can't remember his name. I'm still trying to remember his name. Took darts, four of them, in fact, and just threw at him. And he took it like a dartboard. Of course he did, because he's PCO. That's what he does. He he took the he he was having the darts thrown at him. Yeah, right in his chest. He was doing yeah, it. If, yeah, if you ch- if you check he his, did. yeah, this if you check his Twitter, he, he was down in his basement the other night lifting up a a, a railroad. Um, like a, a rail, pumping it up he's, and down, and taking dark at the same time. He's insane, guys. It's great. It's how he's not this human. is how this is how the world works. Is that PCO was supposed to be on the show tonight, but he obviously got called, wanted to come in and all in and do that stuff. And I was like, man, can we get a backup? Shazza was right behind PCO. That's pretty yeah. cool. I'll I'll take some darts. I'll do it. I <laughs> I'm pretty much PCO at this point. There's there's two teams specifically that I'm f- I. I shouldn't say fear, but I'm scared um, for you guys if you have to face one particular. And he's that's Brian Malonis too. With him and Cam Zagami and Chris yeah. Dickinson, uh, Brian Malonis is pretty mean. <laughs> Brian, no, that's fair. That's Brian? fair. If I if I can avoid them, that's <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm okay with that. We'll leave those three up to PCO, right? Yeah, exactly. He can get rid of them, like. That First, be- second round, and then me and him can meet in the finals. Easy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest part that's missing for me is is uh, we don't have um, our Pacific Northwest gal as part of the New Republic because she's over at Stardom. Uh, yes. But the, the I was very that, excited that she was going to be there. and then She's doing good things at Stardom. That's all yes. That is, right? Yes, uh, exactly. Have you? How much do you know about the Dark Lords of the Proteus Wheel? Oh, I... I... I'm I'm 
quite familiar. <laughs> I was quite, I was, I was quite happy to not have them in the first round. <laughs> That's not to say that I will not have them in another round. They are very scary, very large men, uh, and I do not want to be destroyed have- by the big scary men. <laughs> Frantic on probably a month ago now, and I think he threatened both of us. He, th- oh. I, he threatened you, he threatened me, but then I told him that I knew where your address was, was so I could get out of there. <laughs> yeah, thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, we did an interview with uh, Frantic and, and Greenette, of course, um, mm-hmm. Kayfabe, and, Kayfabe and in character, so that's that's what we love about Ch- Chikara and the King of Trios, it really is. It's just fun. And like exactly. That, I, for years, I those... I don't know, five or six years in a row where I actually traveled from Boston to Philly for King of Trios. Um, we'd go down. We didn't stay the whole weekend. We'd go down and do, like, one night. And got to see, like, the, the Johnny Saint match. I was there for that. You were there? That's insane. Yes. I believe that was the same night Lindsay Dorado dove out of the crowd, uh, out of the ring, into the first and <laughs> second of the crowd. That's when you know you're over in Chikara. Right, JP? <laughs> the holy poop chant. The holy poop yeah. chant. And well, that fingers was... crossed I can get a holy poop. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> sentence to say. <laughs> well, anything dangerous, because you don't know who you're going to have to face. You don't want to hurt yourself doing yes. some crazy dive. You want to... I, I don't know. Like, Do you have some kind of... Without giving your opponents too much, do you have some kind of plan going into this? Oh, we have a game plan. We've had team meetings. We've had, like, we've, we've strategized. We're, we're good. Don't worry. We have a game plan on how we're winning. Because I don't know how you would make it, like, because you don't know. Like, all right, so if this, like, you just make a plan for every team. You, you, you make a plan for all all uh, 15 other teams. I was like, how many other teams is there? For 16. Right. You make a plan for 15 teams. You make 15 plans, and you sort it. You have a little notebook ready to go. It's like a playbook. Like, I assume that's what footballers do. They just have a playbook. Yeah, like a playbook, but a wrestling play. Okay. That's a smart move. That's a smart way. Yeah, to... we're smart people. Ah, my pick was the answer for it. <laughs> now, if you literally have a notebook with plans, I don't know. I might think, I might think you're on. Yeah, we use, like, Madison go to the right, Jess go to the left, Shaz go straight, and then we meet in the middle, and then victory is ours. <laughs> that's... As long as victory is yours at the end, that's all that matters on the game. Yeah, right? exactly. That's exactly. almost like Mr. Miyagi-san. Stay on left side road, <laughs> stay on left side road. Go in middle, yeah. squish like grape. Squish. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I would hope your plan, if you got to go against someone like Brian Malonis, Brian Malonis, <laughs> oh, is for you to stay away from them. I mean, yeah, the, the, my plan specifically in that probably, yes. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Shaz, I, I want to thank you uh, for taking uh, 45 minutes out of your time um, that you're not in Australia. You're actually here tomorrow morning over there, but you're here. Um, how do the people find you on social media if they want to reach out to uh, you? You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram, sh- uh, at Shazza underscore McKenzie. Uh, and then and I also have a store on WrestleMerch.com, which is where everyone should go to. So there's lots of cool Australian wrestling merchandise on that site. I never heard of the WrestleMerch.com. I will be WrestleMerch.com. Oh. Jazz, I really appreciate your time. I know it's thin this weekend. Um, good luck. We be will... safe. Yes. And, <laughs> and run from Brian Malonis. Okay. Good plan. <laughs> Thank you.